It's seven o'clock on a lovely autumn morning and we've come to the beach to collect razor fish. The water is crystal clear and very cold, but we're keen. So tonight we're going to try for some whiting off the beach. So we're needing to collect some bait and razor fish is one of the baits that you can use. So we've come to pull up some razor fish during the low tide. So it's a beautiful morning actually, Martin. This is an excellent location for razor fish and the dropping waters of the low tide are making them much easier to see, even uncovering some completely. Let's check out the bag limits for razor fish. No minimum size and 25 razor fish per person. Even though we can take 25 razor fish each, we're not going to, we'll probably take about half that. Razor fish are slow growing and they can't get away from you like fish can. So their numbers are being depleted. Please only take what you need. These mysterious objects in the water are actually made by snails. They make them out of sand and they lay their eggs in them. Amazing! Oh, oh there's fish. Oh wow. There's all fish in here. Funnily enough, razor fish are not fish. They're a type of clam. Well, actually, they're a bivalve mollusk. The heart of the razor fish is excellent bait, particularly for whiting, but apparently it tastes good too, and the entrails make excellent burley. Whole forests of razor fish are found in deep water, but around Streaky Bay and the Gibson Peninsula, razor fish are found on the shoreline. Today we're at the split, which is accessed from Cape Bower Loop Drive. You can hear them all around me. Just jumping in the water. How cool. They're in like super shallow. They're only tiny. But you know, where there's little fish, this is probably why the flathead was here. The beaches around this area are accessed by dirt roads. Four-wheel drives are recommended as the tracks to the beach are rough in places and the sand is quite soft. There's no stairs to worry about because you can drive straight onto the beach. There's no facilities, cafes or shops around here, but Moore's boat ramps only around 10 minutes away which has toilets and a fish cleaning table. So it's, it's just hit low tide and uh, some essential things we've already learned is that gloves really help. Show us, Martin. Gloves. Gloves because the shells are pretty rough and you want to get a good grip on them when you're trying to pull them up out of the sand. So you need your gloves to stop just... yourself from getting cut. And I've cut myself before with our gloves, so we've got two different types here. I don't know what the difference is, but the, um, they both stop me getting cut. So make sure you got your gloves. Also, footwear. Make sure that you've got something covering your feet because razor fish are very sharp. And uh, go on, Martin, show us your feet. <laughs> I don't know if I've got that angle right. I've actually got my fishing shoes with spikes on because they've got a super heavy sole. Um, Martin's already seen a flathead whiz by, so that was pretty exciting. Shame we weren't fishing for the flathead today, Martin. Yeah, we don't have the rods. <laughs> no, we're here just for one purpose, and that's to grab some razor fish. Um, so we've already collected some, but we'll just have a look at some. We've found a patch, and uh, we'll just pull some more up. You can see one in the water just here. You've got to try not to stir the sand up. Oh, that one came up really easily. There you go. That was easy, that one. So that's kind of, from what we can see, of sort of a medium-sized one. It's a razor fish. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a medium size one. They get, came they, up pretty easy, that one. They probably come out to about here, the bigger ones. Yeah. Let's grab another one. See if there's some bigger ones over here. There's a couple here that might be bigger. This is a good patch, Martin. Are they... Are you about to step on one? Yeah, it's very glittery water. So maybe you, you can see them all over here, but I think... When the water's really shallow, they must just completely stand up out of the water, so it'd be much easier, wouldn't it? Razorfish can be found in clumps in and around seagrass. It took me a while to realise what they look like. They bury themselves in the sand, pointy end down, and attach themselves to stones and shells to anchor themselves. Generally, they come out pretty easily, but sometimes you need to twist them from side to side to loosen them first, then pull them up. It can take some strength. Wow. Most areas have a closure period every year from the 1st of October to the end of February, so you can't collect razorfish during this time. Make sure you check the Perza website to get up-to-date information. So we've been here about 20 minutes and we've got enough razorfish for tonight. We've got a you know, a bucket full. Um, so what we're gonna do is crush up those shells and throw it in the water. Um, and that attracts the, the whiting. It's supposed to be like burly that attracts the whiting. That's what we've been told. So that's what we're gonna give it a go. And we'll also use the hearts, the razorfish hearts. We'll put them on our hooks and try them as bait. I, I'm not sure they're gonna stay on, but we'll give it a shot. We'll take, um, some other bait options as well though just in case it doesn't work it's always a good idea to have more than one bait option we returned in the afternoon to fish for whiting but we didn't catch any we did however catch this beautiful flathead which we cooked up on the beach and had under the stars We've caught whiting before using razor fish though. Look at these beauties that we caught off the rocks at Tractor Beach. So how easy is that? All you need are a good pair of shoes, gloves and a bucket. Nothing fancy. So why don't you give it a try? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. It helps fishing system more than you know.